Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. I hope everyone's staying safe. My name is Yusuf Al Mohana, Bariatric Surgery Fellow at McGill University, and today our team would like to share with you our humble work titled Short Term Outcomes of Provisional Surgery After a Sleeve Gastrectomy, Comparative Analysis of Free Sleeve, Ron Y Gastric Bypass, and Duodenal Switch of Both Types, Ron Y and a Single Elastomosis. Our team has nothing to disclose. Since 2004, sleeve gastrectomy has become the most commonly performed primary surgery worldwide, and the reasons behind that are that it's relatively easy to perform compared to bypass type procedures, its safety profile, making it the procedure of choice for patients with complex medical histories, and finally, its satisfactory long-term outcomes. However, between 3 to 3 to 34% of patients who have undergone sleeve gastrectomy may require reoperations for some chronic complications such as refractory acid reflux or weight loss failure or regain, which could reach up to 20% at long term. Therefore, we need to have a good revisional option to be able to consider the best revisional procedure for patients with the aforementioned complications. So in our study, we aimed to compare short-term outcomes of four procedures, including resleeve gastrectomy, conversion to gastric bypass or the classical switch, or conversion to the recently introduced single anastomosis switch after a failed primary sleep. The caveat is identifying the most optimal revisional procedure that matches the patient's needs. Inadequate weight loss, persistent obesity-related comorbidity, and chronic complications, quality of life, and GERD. How did we do it? We um, conducted a retrospective study of uh, prospectively collected data at a single academic institution. All the patients who had undergone a revisional procedure after a prior sleep gastrectomy between 2010 and 2018 were included in our study. Those procedures were resleeve gastrectomy, gastric bypass, classical switch, and single anastomosis switch. Our inclusion criteria were less than 50% of excess weight loss, 20% or more weight regain of the last of the lost weight, and the presence of non-GERD refractory obesity-related comorbidity. We excluded patients who underwent a planned second stage procedure after a sleeve gastrectomy, as well as patients who were revised to gastric bypass due to refractory GERD. Our primary outcome was uh, weight loss after revision, described as absolute and percentage total weight loss, change in body mass index, and percent excess weight loss. Only short-term outcomes were assessed due to varying follow-up time and the recently introduced single anastomosis switch procedure at our center under study protocol since late 2016. So the short-term outcomes were assessed for patients with complete follow-up of 6 to 18 months after revision. Composite post-op complications were used as secondary outcomes, 90-day versus long-term post-op complications reported as major or minor. Our study cohort included 94 patients who have undergone a revisional procedure at our institution after a failed sleeve, most of whom were females. Median age was 49 years, and the median BMI was close to 42 kilograms per uh, meter square. Sleep apnea and hypertension were the most prevalent non gerd obesity-related comorbidity at baseline prior to revision. In terms of indications for revisional surgery, inadequate weight loss at one year was the most common reason to qualify for a revision, followed by weight recidivism. Please bear in mind that some patients have more than one indication for a revisional procedure. Patients who underwent classical switch mostly suffered from inadequate weight loss, and the patients who had re-sleeve gastrectomy rarely had any residual obesity-related comorbidity. Only 71 patients had completed a follow-up a time of 6 to 18 months, median of 14, and therefore used to assess our primary outcome. Median interval delay between primary sleeve and the revision was 31 months. Median BMI prior to revision was close to 42, with the highest belonging to the classical switch group, 46.8 kilograms per meter square. One year or 6 to 18 months after revision, median percent total weight loss was 12. But comparing the individual procedures, the largest absolute weight loss and BMI change were achieved at the classical switch, which were a median of 22 kilo and eight point drop in BMI. Changes in obesity related comorbidities were also reviewed in details. However, there, were, there was a significant amount of missing data on the status of those comorbidities, therefore not tabulated nor analyzed. 
Uh, table four gives us an insight into the operative characteristics and post-op complications. The shortest procedure was the re-sleeve, which is not surprising, and the longest was the classical switch with a median procedure time of 215 minutes. Median length of stay was two days, irrespective of the procedure. Seven patients in total experienced 90-day complications, and all, 90 -day, all major 90-day morbidities occurred after either the gastric bypass or the classical switch. There were 15 long-term complications beyond the 90 days after the revision, virtually all of them occurring after the gastric bypass or the classical switch. We found that revisional procedures allowed for further 12% total weight loss and more six unit drop in BMI, with the classical switch being the most effective, achieving 14% total weight loss and eight unit drop in BMI. As for, the, as for the duodenal switch type procedures, when comparing the single anastomosis to the classic switch in terms of change in BMI, classic switch yielded nearly double the change in BMI during the short-term follow-up, despite having the highest median BMI pre-revision that is close to 47. But the single anastomosis was also effective in terms of added weight loss and the safety to perform. These findings are important, especially because in our study, an adequate weight loss at one year was the most common reason to qualify for a revisional procedure. We also noticed patients who underwent duodenal switch type procedures had suffered from severe obesity prior to their sleeve. Moreover, after comparing duodenal switch type procedures and their own wine gastric bypass, it revealed significantly higher weight loss, median absolute total weight loss, weight loss of 22 versus 13, and median BMI change of 8 versus 5. On the other hand, we observed a 7.49 day complication rate and a 4.3 rate of major morbidity after revisional surgery. We did not encounter any major complication among patients that had a single anastomosis after a median follow-up time of 11 months. This is likely explained by the very small sample size meeting the follow-up criteria. As for long-term complications, the observed rate in our study was close to 16%, most of which categorized as major belonging to both gastric bypass and the duodenal switch groups. Our study had some limitations. The rest respective nature may limit the generalizability and conclusions that can be drawn. The small sample size also limits detailed statistical analysis to, to interpret various independent predictors of outcome after revisional surgery. Although our study period spanned over nine years, the overall follow-up, especially at long-term, was poor and less than 50%, which led us to only analyze the short-term outcomes up to 18 months after surgery. The possibility of selection bias in patients with super obesity, i.e. BMI above 50, being more prone to undergo switch type procedures compared to gastric bypass or re-sleeve. And finally, the missing data uh, in regards of the comorbid conditions. But what's good about this study is that it provides comparative weight outcomes and morbidity outcomes up to 18 months after four revisional procedures, including both classic and single anastomosis switch. In conclusion, revisional procedures offer further uh, weight loss after a filled primary sleeve. Bypass type procedures are superior compared to the sleeve in terms of uh, weight loss and comorbidity resolution. And of course, in the expense of the complications as we have seen in the results section. And duodenal switch type procedures are safe and effective in patients with severe obesity. Thank you very much for tuning in and wish, you, and wish everybody a good day.